Today's tutorial, we're focusing on double gauze fabric and Liz and Elizabeth Evans from Simple Simon and Company have a quick and easy project. So welcome ladies. Thank you, we're so glad to be here. Today we're going to be making a three-step baby blanket with double gauze. We love double gauze. It's lightweight, it's breathable, and it has a really fun texture. And I'm just bringing up one of our bolts. Riley Blake has just released a lot of fun prints in double gauze, and there's a few tips to learn about double gauze when you're um, working with it. It does move a little bit like knits, and so you have to be careful because it does shift and give. Um, what's nice about our double gauze is there is a, um, a cutting line because there's little squares. So what double gauze is, is it's two um, pieces of fabric, cotton fabric, 100% cotton fabric weaved together loosely. And um, so you get that lightweight feel, but still has a, um, some substance to it. So you can take a um, scissors and you can just find your cutting line and just cut all along there. So you make sure you're cutting on grain. So that's one tip. Did you have any other tips? It's like, that's a great that? feature for great cutting. Tip. It reminds me a lot of a lightweight linen. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever worked with linen before, it kind of has the same feel and it will move the same way as you're working with it and sewing. And it has a great texture. I really, really like the texture. What, what I also love about double gauze is the more you use it, the more you wash it, the softer it gets. And so it makes ideal for baby blankets. Perfect baby blanket project. So let's get started. What do you need for this project? We really are going to do this in three steps. So it's a fairly easy project. So you can make a lot if you need to, if you have a lot of babies in your life. There's a few simple tools that we need. You'll need your double gauze, of course and then some sort of circle. You could use a bowl at home or a circle. Today we have a circle ruler. And this is designed by Lori Holt. And this is a great tool to have in your sewing room. It's perfect. A fabric marker. We'll be using our rotary cutter and our quilting ruler, and then some scissors just to round out the corners. I love um, rounding corners on baby blankets and I think I it's because too. my grandma yes. used to say corners poke babies in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's just a personal preference. But today we'll show you how to round those corners and make the blanket. All right. So our first step, I'm going to just move this one out of the way, is we need to cut our fabric. And baby blankets, I like to make them square. So you can choose what size. I think a great round number for size is either 30 inches by 30 inches or 40 inches by 40 inches, yeah. depending on your preference if you like them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Let's, let's do um, 40 by 40, I think is my favorite number. So we're just going to cut our and you Cut fabric. off your sel selvages. Yep. Let's fold this into a great fold right here. I love your tip about cutting the double gauze. And your gauze has a great square grid that you can actually yeah. see right in it, which makes cutting it, so easy. It makes it really easy because you can cut right on the line across. So we will fold this in half again. And I think I have it really well lined up. If it tends to shift, you can open it up and cut it. I'm going to just cut it with the quilting ruler and our rotary cutter just for sake of ease. I'm going to, let's trim off this side to make it even first. And then we'll measure it. And this, you can kind of see how it will give on this little, on this line down here a little bit. So just do your best to line it up, keep it straight. Take your quilting ruler and your mat, line that up. And then, whoops, I need to make sure I'm on the fabric all the way. And then here we go. We'll just cut it off to make sure we've got a nice crisp end to start with. And I'll flip this over. And I'm just going to measure 20 inches. And then I'll move this guy down. I'll fold him back over here. And you get your. I'm gonna line it right inches. up right there. And cut this part off. And then we'll do the exact same thing with cutting off our selvage edge. So I'm just going to take it and fold it into a square the other way. 
line this up. Um, so we're already on the fold on this edge over here. I think another thing, sometimes double gauze uh, doesn't come in the great width that you have. Sometimes it only comes like 30 or 35 inches. But this one is great for a baby blanket because your double gauze comes in that wider width, which is very nice. You can even make some burp cloth or something else out of something that. Something else with your scraps. Yep. So now that we've got our square, I just want to, I just like that rounded corner look for our baby blankets. So we're just going to, Cindy, do you want to round our corners? Yes. This is a great tool. I usually mark it, right? I do. If I'm I lazy, like sometimes I just take my rotary cutter and go for it. But That's exactly what I do. <laughs> but we'll be good. We'll, we'll mark it this time. Okay. And if you're comfortable with the rotary cutter, you can do it with that. If you are not, oh, you can do it with I, scissors. And I just did it. No, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Or you can use your scissors. What you're most comfortable with is <laughs> what you do. And then look at that great round corner. This is a good ruler. That's yeah. a great I need tool. one of those. Yeah, I, I love that. So now we have all four of our corners rounded in one fell swoop. And I'm just going to hand this over to Liz. She's just going to use the serger to go around the whole perimeter of the baby blanket so we can get an edge on it that doesn't fray. So I'll hand that right over to you. All right. Now when I serge, I don't like to start on a corner. Perfect. I don't want to start on this rounded edge. I want to start somewhere along my straight side. So I'm just going to start right in the middle of the straight side. I'm going to cast on here. Um, like Elizabeth was saying, this is great to stop your edges from fraying. But if you don't have a serger, and we love our serger, but if you don't have a serger, you can always use your sewing machine and just zigzag around the entire perimeter as well. You don't need to use a serger. All right, here we go. So now we're going to add some of our pom-pom trim, and I love these little tiny ones because they're actually sewn into the trim, so you don't have to worry about a choking hazard or something else for babies. But you could choose a different trim if you wanted to, some fun, cute bias tape or other things, but these mini pom-poms just make the blanket so cute. Yeah, they do. I've never sewn them on, so you want me to sew? Yes, please. Okay, that so tell me great. how you do it. I just sew. I don't even pin, but I do lay them out um, right on that serging line that we made, so it gives you kind of a good guideline. And you can sew these on with a zipper foot. It is the perfect width. It, it, it really is. It covers up your serge. It edge. covers all of it. But I actually like the regular sewing machine foot because it will kind of hold these mini pom-poms. They're not fat enough where they won't go through the machine, but it holds them in place so that you can get a great stitch and get them on there. And we will take it to the machine. And your stitch length in your zigzag, I noticed, is 1.4. I do. I like a small zigzag just because the trim is really small. But it makes a cute little edge on the side of the pom-poms, too, where the zigzag stitch. And I even like this, that you don't have to do um, any pins. The no pinning is my favorite part. And if you can see kind of how that presser fit, if you get them right on that I, right hand I side. Know, I know, I'm trying to move it over <laughs> just a little bit. There we go. You're almost there. And the lining it up's the hardest part. It really and then is. You're off. But then it will hold it kind of in place as you're sewing them. There we go. I can see how it would be very easy to use a zipper foot too, though. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to shift that over right there. So it's probably a good idea to use matching thread with your pompons. Yes, yes. And then to stop and start, we just, when we got close to the end, we cut off um, the length that would match up, and then we just kind of overlapped it yep. for one pompon. Exactly. So. Just backstitched a little bit around that edge. And you have a blanket in three easy steps. And it is just going to be so soft and nice, especially for summer, warm weather. This is like the perfect loose blanket. 
So you also have fun tutorials on your website, and you have a baby blanket featured on your website. We do. We brought another blanket today. Um, it's out of the Riley Blake Four Corners fabric. Which is your collection. Yes. Love and it. we love it. This is a really easy tutorial that's up on our site, and it's just quilting cotton on one side, some soft fabric on the other, and then we just quilted it using our sewing machines at home. For this tutorial and for lots of other great tutorials, you can find the, all the instructions on our blog, simplesimonandco.com. And you have a great blog. Always love to visit. So thank you for joining us today. This was a great, fun, and easy project. For more projects like this, subscribe to our Riley Blake Designs YouTube channel. <laughs>